good evening class welcome to your daily current affairs session on paper hindu so today morning we were unable to take this session that is why we are taking a brief session on today's current affairs let's see what are the important topics for today so more of a political news so let's see what are the articles important as as of for your upsc So this article just speculates that artificial water resources in national parks may be keeping elephants off Kabini. So it's not a clear thing. Good evening, Ram Chandu. Yeah, one small update. I told that today I'll be discussing about your new pensions and old old pensions as it was delayed. I was unable to complete that. So we'll be doing it in the tomorrow's morning session. Okay, fine. Meanwhile, let me discuss about important articles for today, uh, Ram Chandu. It's an update for you too. So we'll be discussing about your uh, uh, new pensions and old pension schemes differences tomorrow. But yeah, there is one article about this EPFO. Uh, it is an explainer article. We will see that. Okay, fine. So yeah, away from the spotlight, India holds conference of a global intelligence chiefs. Counter terrorism, radicalization. So first of all, what is this article about? So currently, yeah, yeah. So this is regarding about a Resina, a Resina dialogue. So currently, eighth Resina dialogue has ha commenced. So with respect to that, that uh, it is being told that India holded a conference of go global intelligence chiefs. So it may be raw in India. So in the same way, there are different intelligence organizations restricted to each particular country. So all these organizations chiefs have attended a particular uh, meeting. So it is not something which is open meeting, but yeah, which is closed or is away from the spotlight. Okay, yeah, fine. So this article and mainly their focus was about counter terrorism, radicalization, drug trafficking. So mainly related to issues that are threatening one's country's security. Okay, so that were the topics that they have discussed at the Rizina dialogue, security dialogue on which held on March 1st. So it saw participation of officials of 26 countries including UK, France, Japan and one thing was that US was unable to attend this particular meeting. All the other countries have attended, US did not attend because previously itself just uh, before that in the February 2nd week it has, uh, they made one visit to India that is why they were unable to visit this particular conference of intelligence chiefs okay so ahead of the g20 foreign uh, ministers meeting and ahead of the rising dialogue india quietly held the second conference of intelligence and security chiefs top officials from all over the world called the Rezina security dialogue on march 1st which saw participation from over 26 countries so 26 countries and more and uh, prominent countries are those like uk france japan and other countries like bahrain other countries have attended except us so the main topic is about the counter terrorism, radicalization, all the issues which are threatening security of one country's nation, okay, one country's border or whatever it is, okay. So that is about that article. Next, nation secure pact to protect marine life, marine life in the high seas. So first of all, what is this high seas? Any of the ocean or marine border. So we have territories with. Uh, ocean too, we have border, suppose the peninsular India have borders with ocean only, no? So here you have Bay of Bengal, Arabian Sea, Indian Ocean. So we are surrounded with the three, three particular uh, areas with ocean only. Here till 200 nautical miles, we have our own special economic zone, all these zones. After that, international waters start. So where no country will have any of the, uh, like any other country doesn't own any kind of ownership on that. So when there is no ownership, there is a question that who will be protecting that particular marine biodiversity. So for the first time, anything that is for the first time, it is important. So as of now, global countries, especially the UN members have come up with a particular plan so they have agreed to have a unified treaty on to protect the biodiversity in the high seas. So to protect whatever the flora or fauna, especially apart from these 200 nautical miles in high seas, in this particular area, they will be focusing on what? 
biodiversity conservation plan and one of the importance of this particular uh, particular thing is that it is binding on all the nations which agree for this particular conservation mechanism. So, binding in sense definitely they have to follow their own regulations. So, it is not something which is of uh, non-binding in nature that means they do not agree with that or they go against it, it is not the case. So, definitely they have to follow the regulations. So, for the first time happened updated framework to protect marine life regions outside the national boundary waters known as high seas. Just now I told it is around after 200 nautical miles, 200 nautical miles comes your international waters which is called your high seas. So, for that particular area they have developed a particular treaty which deals with the protection of biodiversity. So, for the for more more than two, 20 years it was in the discussion but they have not come up with a particular treaty and right now they have framed this particular treaty. So, unified agreement treaty which implies nearly half of the planet surface was reached late Saturday. So, they have come up with this particular plan where almost uh, different UN, UN nations have agreed to have this and this particular body will create a new body to manage conservation of ocean life and establish marine protected areas in the high seas. So, they will be having a particular team where or an organization which will especially focus on working of or to conserve the marine protected areas conservation of ocean lives, ocean lives in high seas. Simple, simply put the main focus is on biodiversity conservation in high seas that is all. Nothing more than that. So, that is about this article and they pledged UN biodiversity conference pledged to protect 30 percent of the planet's waters as well as its land for conservation. So, this is again another target ok fine. So, that is about this article nothing more than that next. So, that is important for your environment GS3 and yes India close to Hindu rate of growth says XRBA chief. So, just before 3 4 days or a past week we have seen an article where current RBI governor who is our RBI current governor Mr. Shakti Kantadas he has speculated that India needs to revise its growth in GDP to 7 percent. So, to they are trying to fix it to the above limit of 7 percent right. So, now they are speculating around 6.5 or 6.8 and now they wanted to shift it to upward towards 7 percent because he was mentioning that even if there is some kind of western disturbances or global uh, growth less growth of global rate it would be having a soft impact. So, there might there will be growth rate, but in a lesser percentage that is what he has mentioned he, uh, he was being more of a positive opinion with respect to the existing recession. But RBI ex chief has told that it would definitely or the most probably India would go to a situation of Hindu growth rate. So, what is this Hindu rate of growth we need to know. But before that he mentioned the reasons why he is speculating this. First let me tell you what is this Hindu growth rate then let me go for the reasons why he has expected that. So, first thing what is this Hindu growth rate? So, Hindu rate of growth is a term describing low Indian economic growth rates from the time of 1950s to 1980s which averaged around 4 percent. That means, during the 1950s to 1980s overall the growth was around 4 percent only. This growth was mentioned as Hindu rate of growth and currently RBI ex chief is telling that now the current growth will also be lessened it to 4 percent it is not something that you have to uh, reassure or you have to make this numbers higher, but it is a case where you need to reduce it to very much lesser percentage to around 4 percent. Why he has mentioned this? What is the reasons or what are the reasons? So, yeah he has mentioned that who is this ex chief who has mentioned is that uh, Mr. Go uh, ex governor which is Raghuram. Ranj, Rajan. So, Raghuram Rajan he is the person he has told that there will be a dangerous close to the Hindu rate of growth that means our current this year's rate of growth would be almost reduced to 4 percent or on an average to 4 percent subdued due to private sectors due to subdued private sectors or lessened private sector investment then high interest rates. So, high interest rates again an issue and global economic slowdown. So, all the Uttar Pradesh. So, what they are trying to do? 
Uttar Pradesh governor recently announced projects such as a cow sanctuary to address the increasing means of stray cattle in the state, but farmers are innovative methods such as CCTV or electric fence to protect their crops. So currently the government has announced such as a cow sanctuary to address the increasing menace. That means because of these electrical fences or any other kind suppose accidents, overall accidents would lead to just a moment. So, it might be because of accidents or because of electricity, these electrical fences, lot of cows are being dead. So, with respect to that, Uttar Pradesh governor has announced that there would be some cow sanctuary which will be having effective CCTVs and also CCTVs and electric fences to protect this particular cows and avoiding them to damage their crops, okay. But here, what happened was the farmers are using innovative methods, two things, Uttar Pradesh is planning, uh, the government is planning to have a cow sanctuary to protect it from different accidents at the same time protecting farmers from making these cows damage their crops. Whereas the farmers are using different CCTVs or innovative methods, we can say CCTVs or this electrical fence to monitor or to avoid these cows damaging their crops. So, in some villages, stray, stray cattle roam around 400 to 500 in group and they do not just eat or damage the crop but also cause accidents on the streets. So, for that, they have come up with a plan that currently Uttar Pradesh will have a cow sanctuary. So, overall in this article, what is important is that they are coming up with a plan to have a cow sanctuary which is against the existing practices of Uttar Pradesh farmers where they have used CCTVs or electric fences which is again causing huge uh, like mean is to cow, okay, fine. So, that is about this article. So, nothing more than that. They have also mentioned about this jet car, which is again dangerous one. All these reasons they have mentioned. So, which is again an electronical appliance which would uh, be harmful to cows only. So, all that they have mentioned, which again not much required. Next. So, regulators guidelines on Rajasthan power lines flout, SC orders threaten busted. Another issue again related to this elect electrical, so electrical fences. What is this issue about? So, petitioners say that high tension power lines from solar plants in the states of Rajasthan and Gujarat often pose obstacles for the flight path of birds causing them to collide often fatally into them. So now, the question is that we are already working for clean energy, why? To protect our biodiversity, to protect our environment. So this is again a question of turning into renewable at the same time, is it actually benefiting to the, to the environment or is it threatening the environment? GS3, ethical concerns in your environment part. So here what is happening is that now they are planning up with the HT lines, high tension power lines. HT lines which are placed above the ground. Now, these are getting getting electricity from solar panels, okay. So, renewable energy. But what is happening? These bustards, great Indian bustards are trying, they are fleeing in this particular path and because of this high tension wise, they are hitting to it and they are falling dead, okay. So, that is the question here what should the Supreme Court be taking a decision or the legislature be do, taking the decision. Currently, what decision has been taken is that in a move that helps the solar power projects in Rajasthan, but may hinder efforts to make the region safe for the endangered. So, your great Indian busted is endangered species as part of your red list IUCN, endangered species. Now, Rajasthan had made, made a decision that through central Electricity Authority, India's apex regulation has proposed that lines below 33 kV, so 33 kilowatts, these lines will be laid underground, above that will be laid above. So 33 kV lines, whatever are the below of that particular voltage will be laid below and rest of them will be fitted with bird diverters. So, whatever the lines that are running ahead on top, they will be fitted with this 
bird diverter so that the bird will not be fleeing into it. Now what is the issue? Conservationists have objected to the proposal saying that the moo could lead to extinction of the bird because they are allowing it to stay on the upper ground itself, right? So furtherly even with the existence of this bird diverters, it might really kill. Above 11 kV itself it is uh, hitting the bird and they are killing, they are getting killed. So it says if the regulations came into effect this would lead to the extinction of the critically endangered species which is also state national board of Rajasthan. If this happens it would be a major threat to or it would lead to the extinct of this particular bird which is your Indian bustard. So see a uh, proposal was this draft regulations all these they have mentioned this high tension power lines from solar often lie in the flight so which I have already told. So these HT lines were in the flight where exact flight in the sense in the height where it would actually collide that means the height of this HT lines are in a way or in the path of these Indian bustards okay. So which is uh, making these bustards more vulnerable to electric shocks, electric attacks okay fine. So that is about this article. So they are telling that no, no, it should not be the case. And the environmentalists and conservationists approved Supreme Court in 2009 following it directed that all low voltage power lines in areas demarcated of the potential priority habitats in the Thar and desert should be pushed underground. So whatever are this low voltage power lines, whatever the low voltage power lines are there, they should be pushed underground. But because of their decisions, this high power, high tension power lines flying through on flight which is making them vulnerable. So that is about this article, okay, fine, next. Guidelines for UIDF likely to be released by March end, urban infrastructure fund, development fund. So this has been mentioned in our budget and every annual, that means every year annually basis 10,000 crore amount will be mentioned or that will be spent on tier 2 and tier 3 uh, tier 3 cities for infrastructure development okay so currently yeah created for the growth of tier 2 and tier 3 cities should foco focus on the projects which are effective utilization of funds must provide services encourage projects with lower carbon footprint so here their focus is on development of infrastructure guaranteeing green economy so developing development developing this green infrastructure green economy at the same time infrastructure development in tier 2 and tier 3 cities right so they have released currently certain guidelines so not released they will be releasing it by march end certain guidelines on how to spend this actual amount so nothing more than that here what is important your uidf and on annual allocation how much amount is being allocated 10000 crore and this is for developed i mean this is as part of your budget 23 24 has been launched that is very important okay fine other than that nothing is more uh, mentioned in this because the restrictions or what are the rules or regulations has not been mentioned. Once that has come we will be discussing about that too, fine, next. breakdown of the higher pension schemes. So what is this actual thing? Which judgment provided for the new provision of employment pension scheme of 1995? What are the prospective beneficiaries? Will there be additional liabilities of the employers? What are the documents that need to be uploaded? All these were mentioned here. Here what we have, what is required is what is this high pension scheme? So what is actually happening? I will be giving you a gist out of it because I will be discussing about this tomorrow on your old pension scheme and new pension scheme I have to differentiate for you. So I will go in depth tomorrow but as an overview I will be giving you certain terminologies of what is actually happening okay fine. The long wait of subscribers for the EPFO those who retired after 2014 September 1st for, for applying higher pension scheme under EPS of 1995 came to an end on Feb 27th with the organization providing web link on its members page. So we have seen that they have provided a web link in which these people can register into it for availability of higher pensions. For whom? Who are the persons 
who have been retired after September 1st, 2014. All right. The present excise of EPO has been necessitated by the judgment of Supreme Court. So, what was the judgment happened in 2022? EPFO versus Sunil Kumar B was the case due to which this particular link has come and which has made available for the pensioners of higher to avail their higher pensions. Okay. So, yeah. Next, how is this higher pensions or how is this pensionable salary calculated? So, pensionable salary, what is the amount that will be deducted every month from your salary? That will be added into your pension, that is your pensionable salary. How it will be calculated? The pensionable salary which represents the average of last 60 months of the salary, that means if you are going to retire within the 60 months, the 60 month salary will be calculated as an average. That is why most of the people will opt for, uh, let me go for a a promotion at least in the last years, please give me chance. These are the things which will be happening in government sector, especially this EPFO is restricted, mostly restricted to your organized sector, mostly your government sector or anything which is organized. Okay. So, here what is the thing? 60 month average salary will be calculated and will have to be multiplied by the contributory years. That means how many years you have contributed for PF. So, here what are they take, taking into consideration? 60 months average salary average salary into your contributory years so for pf how many years you have contributed divided by 70 why are we taking this 70 so which is and the sum of which is to be divided by 20 which indicates average longevity of an individual which is our um, age that means Average life expectation, yes, average life expectancy of Indian, it is around 70.4 or something. So, with respect to that, they are taking this average longevity due to which they will divide. So, how many months it should be divided? For that, they will be taking this PF, okay, fine. So, that is how your pensionable salary will be calculated. Now, let us go with this article. The long weight of subscribers of EPFO and those have come to an end with giving that particular link. So, that is what mentioned till here. The critical element is that in either of the cases, the employees must have made PF contributions excess of mandatory ceiling of the pensionable salary. So, what is the issue here? On an average, these people like who are all eligible for, for higher pensions, they have already contributed than the expected one. So, how is this going to be calculated? I will tell you that. First, let me explain this. So, critical element here is that before in either of the cases that can be if they are opting for the normal cases, not regarding high pensions, in a normal cases too, they have contributed more to the PF than the actual required amount. So, their cutoffs are being more, have been removed more than the things which they are earning through pensions. So, that is a criticism of both the existing schemes. So, contributions in excess of the mandatory ceiling of the pensionary of salary. Till now, these were the persons who have applied for higher pensions and yeah, the last date of availing this option would be May 3rd. Recently, there was one article where EPFO has asked for the extension till May 3rd, 2023. They have told the Supreme Court that we will not be able to con uh, concise or conceal all the applications by end of April or May, it will be taking till May 3rd. So, that is what they have mentioned. So, what is this EPF, EPFO doing? So, yeah, just a moment. So, here in 2014 amendment, what happened? which came into force on September, raised the pensionable salary cap to 15,000 a month from 6,500 a month, which allowed the employees to contribute 8.3 percent of the employees actual pay if it exceeds the cap from towards EPS. So, now with the amendment of 2014, what has happened? I have two choices. Either I can pay my PF from cuttings of my basic salary, two things. So, you are having your 8.33 and you have term of 15,000. So, let me take both. 
So I, by 2014 amendment, what has happened was, till that I should be having contribution of 8.33 from the basic salary. So from the basic pay, actual pay or basic pay, I have to contribute 8.33 percent, that is the cap. Now, after the amendment, I can contribute, I have a cap of 15,000 rupees. So now, this is employment pensions, see, pensionable salary. Now let's say, from this I can contribute 8.33 percent or this 8.33 percent from my basic salary. Are you able to understand? I have two options. Either I can go for 8.33 cuttings directly from my basic pay or they have introduced this with the 2014 amendment where my pensionable salary would be deducted from a cap amount of 15,000. So with 8.33 percent and other calculation, it would be around 1,250 rupees. Around. If it is a cap of 15,000, it would be around. Let us assume my salary would be around 1 lakh. Now cutting 8.33 percent, let us say 8 percent only, how much is my cut off then? 8,000 no? So 8,000 is my cut off. So if you can see, the cut off is actually more no? So my cuttings from my EPFO is more here. So now they are giving that option, so actual pay here, now see this, even the employees in many instances had been making PF contributions over and above the ceiling of the employees, only 8.3 percent of the salary cap had got transferred to the PF. Now, with this 15,000 as a cutoff, how much is the amount that they are getting paid? 1250 only, no, for 1250 they are, they are adding more, where government is adding more and that you are getting as your PF, right? After 2014 amendment, after this amendment, what has happened? For this government will add almost double or something and employees also will add, employer will add and this amount will be given as my pension, right? But what happened earlier, how much I was actually paying before this? So it is more than that, no? So I am contributing more than that, which, but still what is my PF? I am earning less. So that is why they have opted for higher pension. So they have told that people who are actually eligible based on their amount they paid and then if there is any difference between the PF amount that they are earning, now they can opt for higher pensions. Are you able to understand? I am giving you a brief introduction, tomorrow we will have a clear session on this. So just a brief idea of what is this article about. So now they are mentioning that yes, because of which they can opt for higher pensions, people after 2014, after this amendment, if you are okay with your, like if you really think that your PF is more is less than the ones which you have contributed through cutoffs, then you can opt for this particular plan. And here your employer should agree and you should be in agreement with this, okay? So that is about this article, they have given different other mentions of how you will be calculating which I have already told and what are the documents to be produced and in case if the amount is less, if you are applicant and your amount contribution is less than compared to the pension, then also you can add that amount and interest to it to earn more higher pensions. So that is about this article, clear? Understood? So we will go for your differences tomorrow, no problem with that, I will make sure that we will be discussing it tomorrow. So that is about, uh, just about this article. Next, this is another article. So what are the biocomputers and how do they function? So how do they actually function here? So what is the new era of research outlined by scientists of John Hopkins University? So here, this is important for your science and tech. The new developments, new achievements are important. So what is this biocomputer? Using, let me go for the gist first. Yeah. Scientists of Hopkins University have potentially developed this particular biocomputers which are also called organoid intelligence. So what they are basically doing is they are trying to culture artificially human brains and they are trying to analyze what is this cognitive capacity, what is its knowledge storing capacity. Are you able to understand? So currently which is aiming to create biocomputers. So biocomputer is something nothing but 
they are trying to culture artificially the brain tissues in laboratory and trying to analyze the cognitive knowledge or any other behaviors that human brain have. And now the question is, is it commercially available? How, how level can it be used? So currently the development has reached to only 1 lakh cells to be produced, which is almost a millionth, almost mini thing, no? Compared to brain, it is almost one, uh, 1 millionth or something. Yep, 3 million size of actual brain, so which is almost less. So that is why it is not, it is yet to be commercialized, but has a lot of scope in it. So yeah, scientists are building a 3D cultures of brain tissue in lab called brain organites. These mini brains with a size up to 4 mm, understand the size of 4 mm, not even a centimeter, 4 mm are built using a human stem cells and capture their structural and functional features developing human brain. So they are trying to impersonate human brain and this will also be helpful to develop or to analyze why brain diseases are causing. How can we remove it? So if any issues with brain, say any disease that attacks brain is almost mortality rate. So brain dead, fine, or almost dead. So that is what we are doing. So with this invention, with this particular further development, there can be a possible that possibility that these brain related issues can also be treated. Okay, fine. So JHU researchers have announced a plan to couple organize with machine learning by growing the organoids inside flexible structures affixed with multiple electrodes. So what they are trying to do then they are trying to use this machine learning technology. So using technology and spiring up this particular building of cells, brain cells. So they are trying to uh, mutilate these brain cells with multiple electrodes. Okay, fine. So they tried one of such thing on rats. So basically we will be trying with rats, human, uh, this artificially cultured brains was uh, installed into the brains of rat and once they were triggered with certain lights when they are testing, even the other neutrinos, just a moment, um, let me show it. The brain cells of human was also stimulating and it connected with the blood of rat. So it was showing the positive phenomena where it is trying to communicate with the brain of rat too. So it was a positive step, right? So where our, I was trying to show you that. So yeah. So they have tried to connect it with the rat brain which provided circulating of blood and since the organoids have been transpla transplanted, the visual system and the scientists showed the experimental li uh, rats a light flash, the human neurons were ac activated indicating the human organoids were also functionally active. So after installing it, it, a light was flashed into its eye. The neurons of human humanoid, uh, these biocomputers, basically the humanoid neurons also stimulated which shows that they are biologically active. So we can culture these brains in near future. So that is this update on this particular article. The stall which I have already, which I have told that itself has been mentioned. So yeah, that is about this article and they are trying to focus on human cognition, learning and various neurological disorders. So it will be a good pathway to check upon these diseases, okay and to analyze what is our cognitive behavior. So that is about this articles of today's current affairs. Tomorrow we will be discussing rest all. So yeah, that is it for today. Thank you for the session. Good day.